Okay, so welcome back. Uh, let's continue the discussion. Uh, so it's still, uh, this is our week one, the third video. So we have tried to make every video for around 20 minutes each so that it's uh, uh, easier for you to uh, watch. And uh, so in this, we'll continue our discussion on uh, the population. If you remember, this is the last slide we left in the previous video as well. So in terms of global population growth, as I was telling you, it is the last, uh, if you look at this last uh, 200 years is where we saw a huge increase in population and with the increase in population there is a lot of uh, uh, demand for resources and with this demand for resources actually uh, leads to a lot of environmental implications that's what we are talking about. So if you look at the time it took for the world population to double so if you this is uh, uh, in terms of uh, time for the world population to double and this is from a UN uh, uh, I think it's from a UN document so it's um, it's it's a UN projection uh, for 20, up to 2100 so historical estimate of world population until 2015 and then they had projection until 2100 so initially it took almost 700 years for the world population to double from 0.25 billion to 0.5 million in 1543 so it took 840 years from to go from 0.25 billion to 0.5 half a billion then 594 years uh, to go from this uh, 0.375 to 0.75, 260 years to, point, to double here, 125 here to double, then 78 years, 37 years, and the lowest was 37 years. So our population became from 2.5 billion to 5 billion in just 37 years, as opposed to earlier close to uh, 700 years. So population doubling rate has actually gone up so fast. We, have a, we are developing our population in a very faster rate. And so, so that is why you, you started seeing all this problem uh, where we have a lot of demand for resources and people moving from the rural area to the urban area causing a lot of uh, environmental degradation with the slum areas and all that. And with the, now, as I was telling you in the previous video, we are seeing a decrease in the rate of growth uh, because of uh, uh, the way the more and more people are getting educated, people are moving away from the agriculture to more of an industrial economy. When you work in agriculture, you always look for more pair of hands because people will have to work in the fields and then uh, see if you have more, if you have four siblings, all four of you can go and work in the field and generate revenue for your individual uh, farm. But now with the industrial job, with the industrial uh, uh, and more mechanized and mechanization in the in the farming industry as well, we have we are seeing a dip in uh, re uh, human requirement, the human workforce requirement in many of the jobs in in the agricultural sector, and people moving away from agricultural economy to the industrial economy. So that those and there were several other factors in terms of uh, awareness that more in terms of having less population, uh, having less uh, child, uh, increase in co increase in education cost. Now everybody wants to. To have a decent education so uh, that also require a lot of money is required to get educated you all know very well you have just uh, cleared one of the toughest job one of the toughest uh, exam in the world that in fact cost a lot of money these days even to prepare for that exam and all that so because of all those different factors uh, people are realizing that having uh, to realizing that having too many children is not really a good thing so they are that's the reason why the population growth rate has is going down and that's the reason why you see that in future now we will have uh, it will from 37 years, it will take nearly 50 years to double, we come to become for 8 billion, then another 70 years to go to 10 billions by 2056, and then another 100 close to 95 years to become 11 billion. Uh, in, uh, so for, from 5.5 to 11 billion, it will be in 95 years. So, it, so population doubling rate is uh, doubling time is going up. So that's, uh, uh, that's a positive sign in uh, that way. And it's so if you look at the world population growth uh, again uh, the same same data pre presented in a slightly different st uh, style to just give you a different flavor. So again uh, on the uh, x axis is your time on here and the y axis and this dark region is the actual data. So this is up to 2019 data. So this is slightly better data than slightly not better I will say uh, slightly newer data than what you saw in the previous slide. The previous slide has 2015, this is up to 2019, and then projection is up to 2100. So again, the same projection. Uh, so as you can see, the pro, uh, it, by 2100, we are projected to be close to 11 billion. So 
I think uh, by the time you become a great grandfather, and uh, because that uh, most of you probably will was uh, this is 2020, so I think most of you may be born in 2000, 2001, uh, 2002, uh, that that the time frame. So you will be close to 95, 96, 97 years in 2100, and. Uh, I hope that all of you have a very healthy lifestyle, healthy, healthy life by that uh, up to that particular age. So, and you will have, you will have uh, your grand, great grandchildren's probably by that particular time as well. So, it's uh, so you, you will have 11 billion people. So, and uh, that's but if you if we come down to your uh, up to here by 2050, where you will be very very active professionally, uh, that will be you'll be around 50 years of age. We you have to take care of close to 10 billion people, 9.7 billion people in the world. And as a professional, as a, as a working professional, as an engineer or whatever job you are, you may might be doing at that particular time, and as a global citizen, you will be responsible for, provi for providing solutions to many of the problems that will come because of this uh, increase in population to 10 billion people. There is an opportunity, of course, with every every kind of issues. There is always an opportunity. So you have to uh, come. Up, you have to come up with that uh, those solutions. So again, uh, if you look at the growth rate, we had the highest growth rate of 2.1 percent in 1968, and then we are we are going to see a dip in the growth rate. So right now we are around 2019-2020. So we have 1.08 percent. That's the global growth rate. And as you will see that some countries are growing at a faster rate. As you saw in Australia, it was around what 1.16 percent or something like that, so slightly higher than this number. And uh, and then finally, it will uh, uh, by 2100 we are seeing we will probably have a dip of around 0.1 percent, which will be even if we go if we if we reach that, that would be even uh, uh, was. Uh, uh, like a, it will be much even less than or closer to what we had in 1700. So, so that's that's the growth rate we'll be reaching, and then we'll kind of have some sort of equilibrium uh, by that particular uh, time. So, we already talked about this. I don't think we need to spend more time here. But uh, as you saw, time for global population to increase by one billion. Uh, we, we we looked at this number in a slightly different way. Initially, it took uh, 140. 140 some years, then it took 124 years, then 33 years, 9, 15 years, 12, 12, 12, then 13, 14, 18, 32, and then we hope to see at some point of time we'll have a bigger uh, bar on this particular area as well. So 1 billion in 1803, 2 billion in 1927, 3 billion by 1960, 4 billion 75, 5 billion in 1987, then 99. So in in like my lifetime, uh, we are I'm going to we will say if you uh, uh, will we have become maybe from 5 billion to 10 billion in just uh, in our in uh, like in uh, in hopefully if i have, if i survive for another 30 some years so we'll have um, uh, i'll see a almost doubling of uh, like a huge from 5 billion to 10 million of a population happening just uh, in uh, in my lifetime so so if you look at the where the population is going up so we are here we are in asia and uh, India, China, and some other uh, countries, but India, China is the leading uh, countries in this particular area, and that's where we will see a huge increase. We are we are seeing an increase in population, so more and more population increase in Asia, and now in more population, more demand for resources, more challenges means more jobs, more opportunities. Uh, those of you who want to have some different companies, more entrepreneurial uh, activities needs to be hap needs to happen in Asia, so. It's a it's a big opportunity as well as big challenge. So you'll you'll have a uh, huge uh, population uh, increase uh, uh, even further. This is up to 2016, but there are also further North and Central America. Yes, slightly increase as you can see there the, the top green one. Then South America is the light green. Then Oceania is in the middle here. Um, uh, sorry, that's the Europe. Uh, uh, that's the uh, North. Uh, uh, Oceania, we can hardly see it because of very, uh, very few. Uh, uh, there is a light yellow color here, which if you can watch very carefully, you will see that. Then uh, you have uh, Africa also going up. So Africa, Asia, where you will see the huge increase in population. So it's not only the population increase, also the working age of people. Like if you look, this is from 1950, 200, 2016, and 2100. So this is uh, the world pyramid. 
1950 is uh, the light blue, and then 2016 is the uh, dark blue, and 2100 is the projected by UN is in uh, that uh, dotted line, dotted kind of line from the purple color as you can see on there. So we will uh, we will see the world getting more and more older, uh, like with the aging population. Uh, so in this on the right hand side we are looking at the men, on the left hand side we are looking at the women. So here. 20, uh, uh, like a, if you, uh, this is in the 0 year, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, 70, 80. So, as you can see up to 20 million, 40 million and 60 million, uh, uh, it is in terms of your, uh, uh, if, you, if you look at the age here, uh, in two, 1950, we had more people, if you have, if, if this curve is flatter, uh, if, if its curve is like if, as if it's a if it's like this as you can see over here if it's if you have a sharper tip and then it's bulging at the bottom so when, wherever you see this bulge that means more population in this area so that's your uh, it's a more popul so more younger people so more younger people same thing in uh, uh, 2016 we will we will have a, a lot of uh, still young people but as you can see that over uh, uh, but there is some there is some uh, uh, like age groups and we are seeing a uh, like a kind of more people in the older age too because that is also getting wider on top here. So, this is the width is increasing. So, this width is increasing at different age. So, we are seeing more and more people at uh, at, at the older uh, older people as well. Now, when we go in uh, in, in 20 projected figure for 2100, uh, you see the very width has kind of gone up even from the top to bottom. So, we will we will have uh, almost similar number of old people and young people. So, which is has other implications like uh, usually uh, the, uh, the working age is what contributes to the GDP. The older people have to be supported by pensions and other social security schemes. So, those issues also uh, will come up and that also needs some sort, some sort of uh, a solution. So, we have to think about uh, that as well as we progress in future. Many more of us, a uh, lot of uh, uh, like uh, in, as we saw that uh, our members uh, today exceed 7.5 billion. China and India top the global population with 1.4 billion and 1.33 billion. Um, so that's uh, uh, as this is a picture from from a religious uh, gathering, as you can see from uh, if you can make out from that photograph. But a lot of people, a lot of people, and um, and a lot of people means lot of challenges and lot of resources too, but at the same time lot of challenges as well. And uh, it is not only lot of people, it is also people moving from the rural area to the urban area, which is again creating lot of uh, uh, issues. What is happening many, many places like globally as well and more so in developing countries, especially in the Indian context. Uh, Indian, uh, we are seeing that the uh, development is not being uniform across the country. We see that several, like for example, uh, we have this big four metros. Uh, now there are a lot of other cities which have kind of surpassed some of these metros. Not all of so Delhi, Bombay, uh, Chennai, which is earlier used to be called Madras, uh, Bombay, which is now called Mumbai. So Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, and uh, Kolkata. So, these four used to be the big, like if you uh, 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, they used to be the big metros. Now, today we have several other cities like Ahmedabad, Hyderabad, Pune, Nak, uh, Nagpur to some extent as well, but then uh, you have several, like a lot of other cities have also developed and they are Bangalore and uh, so, they are giving competition to many of these uh, uh, existing metro in terms of services and too. But then for the size of India, for the kind of population that we have, for the we still needs lots of, uh, we we needs more of a uh, decentralized development because what is uh, it's it's a centralized development is creating lot of migration. We saw this during this uh, recent uh, uh, COVID crisis as well when the people were moving back uh, on foot from uh, the big cities back to their villages. So if we have a decentralized development where each and every uh, area of different areas of the country has uh, uh, industrial activities and other things going on so that people doesn't have to move that much and that that has a lot of positives as well as of course it everything has both there is a uh, there is a two sides of the coin always isn't it so uh, so there will be two sides of the coin but uh, this 
decentralization development like where you have development happening throughout the country rather than in, in concentrated places uh, that that will help in reducing the urbanization uh, that will um, urbanization of only few centers rather than the, it will of course it will it will be urbanization but it will be more uh, uh, like diverse or more dispersed development uh, de de development rather than having some concentrated hot spots where it becomes more of an issue so we are getting more and more urban and uh, in um, yeah, about 64% of the world's population uh, were rural in 1970 uh, that has changed drastically. In 2016, the population had dropped to 45%. So, from 67%, 65% to 45% in, uh, we saw the drop. Uh, so, in 2016, only 45% of the people were living in the rural area. So, we see urbanists. So, we are becoming city people instead. We are, uh, we are not uh, rural uh, anymore. We are becoming more and more city. But more than 50 percent of the world's population live in cities now. So, number of us living in urban areas rose from 1.34 billion in 1970 uh, to 4 billion in 2016. So, according to the and majority of us are living in urban areas even in less developed countries. So, uh, that is from a report of World Bank. So, and uh, and that's again has several issues there as well. Uh, it's if you look at the low and middle income as well as high income, uh, you, you see that uh, the rate of urbanization uh, is uh, is happening more in the low income, low and middle income country as opposed to the high income country. So as you so for the last uh, several decades, it has been so the data has been shown here, and you see that more and more the yellow bar is becoming more and more. Uh, uh, taller, and that's the reason more. In, so we see that increase in uh, urban population there. So what is the problem with urbanization? So we are talk, we have been talking about urbanization for some time. So, but what is the issue with that? So let's look at some of these issues, and then uh, uh, we'll just, uh, kind of uh, move uh, to the other video. We'll uh, stop here. So one percent of the land surface urban. Uh, it's it's a one percent of the land surface, but it releases 60 to 70 percent of anthropogenic greenhouse gaseous emissions. So, that is the environmental issues that is why it is we are talking about in this particular course. It is the concentration of population, concentration of economic activities, demand for food, energy, water, materials and all that. And each one of them has environmental relationship, environmental implications as well. So, urban areas is also driving global land use changes. Many of these, uh, uh, the rural, uh, that are, are just our outskirts of the urban area, we had to have a lot of rural settlements. So, those rural things are going and we are becoming more and more concrete jungles. Few, like every now and then, we are having flooding in uh, many, many, many cities, uh, uh, like some cities in India, we saw that too. And those, the, one of the reason for those floods is many of those lakes and ponds which was there which was uh, acting as a reservoir for those water has been filled up and now we have a multi storied buildings there so with this multi storied buildings uh, where the, if the, if you have too much of a rain where this rain will go rain has a certain way to flow uh, the rain water and it will just go into those uh, lakes but now they don't find that lake anymore they found a big rise apartment so they get into the ground floor in the basement of those apartments and then we say we have too much of flooding so so we have to uh, we we have to have uh, to we have to avoid those kind of stuff. So we cannot have too much development in too less area. We have to have more of a uh, like a development all across across the place. So let's uh, stop here and then uh, we'll start our discussion in the in the next uh, video. So I hope uh, uh, you're enjoying uh, the course. Again, I will. Uh, I uh, stress that these videos are for you as an as a material for you to look at uh, before the class, and uh, that's the reason I'm posting it before the class. So you uh, and I'll try to post it all the videos before the before that particular topic is covered in the class, and then we will be meeting on uh, our regular scheduled time. Uh, so this is uh, uh, to so that we can discuss more in our classroom. We can have a more lively uh, discussion, and so. Again, thank you and uh, see you in the next video.